we do not require any more sugar in the cell. In fact, if there was more sugar in the cell than there is right now, it would start destroying this cell. So the cell protects itself. It locks the door right there. It also stops the production of sugar through that pathway by blocking out PFK1 as well. So basically too much sugar locks itself out. It's also immediately unlockable as soon as all that excess sugar has run through the system that drags the citrate back down that unlocks the door and lets more sugar in. If you eat more sugar though, it will lock the door again. So well, hang on, you, you weren't listening before. So hopefully that makes some good sense there. All right. So too much sugar will lock out sugar. The other thing that also happens is because you've got a whole bunch of acetyl coenzyme A pooling because of all of the sugar going through this pathway here, what that will actually do is also that will lock out this long chain fatty acyl coenzyme A molecule from becoming acetyl coenzyme A through allosteric inhibition, basically. So not only does the sugar lock out sugar, it locks out fat as well. So now what we've got is a situation where neither sugar nor fat can feed the cell the energy because there's too much energy already there. It doesn't need any more energy. There is plenty of substrate to run the TCA cycle to produce the reducing equivalents for the oxygen to produce the ATP. That cell is running at maximum capacity. More fuel is just going to damage the cell. So it locks everything out, basically. So that's that's the situation where you've got a lot of sugar happening. So the take home message here is this. Sugar above the concentration that sugar should be is always toxic and will always activate the Randall cycle to some degree or another. Also important to understand that the Randall cycle is not an on off situation. It's a sliding scale situation where when I'm saying this locks out that I don't mean on off switch. I mean a slidable scale from Fully, that stuff can traverse through the pathway through to fully blockaded and nothing gets through. So the particular energetic state of every individual cell determines that cell's ability to either oxidize substrates and produce energy or to be somewhat inhibited, moderately inhibited, very inhibited, or indeed completely blocked, depending on how much energy has pulled in that cell. So when you get a systemic situation where your whole body is full of sugar, everything is locked up. And it's locked up precisely to protect the cells from damage. So the sacrificial lamb, if you like, becomes the red blood cells, which we measure the damage to our red blood cells through glycative damage via a thing called the HbA1c test, which tells us basically how high our blood sugars have been over the last 28 days or so. And the other sacrificial lamb becomes the epithelial cells which line our vascular tree. Because those cells can be replaced generally much more rapidly, and because generally in our evolutionary past there was no amount of carbohydrate being consumed to speak of, this was a, a very rare occasion where this, this cycle would be activated, and the body had 50 weeks of the year to repair itself. As such, no real big deal. And so given that epithelial cells replace themselves every few months as do red blood cells fine we'll, we'll we'll sacrifice these guys they can be damaged by this high circulating sugar and that's no real issue the problem nowadays is that we're doing it most of us all the time every day multiple times a day we are pouring sugar into our systems now when i say sugar duty strike the word sugar and insert carbohydrates 